Time now, 11 minutes past eight. Now, it was known as the Arab Spring, a time when people in parts of the Middle East rose up to demand democracy. But that spring has turned to a harsh winter for some in Syria. Now, Amnesty International is calling for a global day of action. One year to the day that Hosni Mubarak was forced to step down as the president of Egypt. Christian Benedict from Amnesty joins us now, ahead of a rally, London's Trafalgar Square. Tell us a little bit about this day of action uh, itself. Yeah, so we are gathering in London today in Trafalgar Square and some 21 countries around the world, from Morocco to, uh, to Nepal, showing our solidarity with uh, peaceful protesters in the Middle East and North Africa, but also I think it's very important to our, our defiance against those, those governments and those political movements that are trying to uh, repress those people who are standing up peacefully demanding their human rights. We hear how difficult the situation is in Homs at the moment. Mm. How do you physically link up with them? Mm. You mean the, Today, the live stream? Today, how does that work? I mean, we have our contacts on the ground. We have our contacts here who are, who are making those links. I mean, they, they are live streaming via their phones and their wireless video cameras every day. So we're just linking into them through a private live stream, uh, live stream channel. And then we will beam that out from Trafalgar Square today uh, between 12 o'clock and 2 o'clock. And t tell us a little bit about, so you take a situation like Syria at the moment, look, uh, mm. there's a lot we don't know about what's mm. going on there, of course, mm. Mm. but this sense that the uprising is spreading. Mm. Uh, mm. Tell us a little bit about the, the work that Amnesty does. How do you operate in these kind of situations? It's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult. You know, we've been asking the, Sy the Syrian authorities to let us into the country and also for international humanitarians to get into the country so we can ascertain what exactly is going on. Now, obviously, Amnesty and other human rights organizations have their contacts on the ground who we work with, but it's far more preferable uh, that uh, international organizations, human rights organizations, humanitarian organizations are allowed into the country. So we're urging the Syrian authorities uh, to let us in so we can ascertain what the facts are. You say you have good contacts on the ground at the moment. What do you know about the situation there now? Well, th there's a lot being reported in the media uh, right now, the terrible uh, shelling, artillery shelling of places like Homs. Uh, you know, we've got the names of some 300 people uh, who have been killed in, in recent days since the Security Council uh, veto. There's wide-scale repression going on in other parts of the country. This is not something happening just in the past few days or past few weeks. It's over the past few years. So we're impressing on uh, the Syrian authorities to immediately stop the repression, stop the killing. But also those countries that have major influence with the Syrian authorities, the Russian Federation, for one of them, acting absolutely irresponsibly, absolutely callously in, in, in a sense, giving cover to the Syrian authorities' uh, brutal bombardment of places like Homs. And I guess, in a way, what you, you're trying to do today, and anyone who's watched current affairs over the past year or two, is mindful of just how much has changed. I mean, there would have been a period of time only, what, a few years ago, when yeah. people said the changes that have happened now yeah. in Egypt and other places, yeah. and now we look at Syria, yeah. could never happen. Yeah, is it's, that dramatic? I think it's massively dramatic what's happened. It's, it's uh, you know, a once-in-a-generation situation where people who know places like Syria and other, other countries in the Middle East know how difficult it is for ordinary people just to go on the streets and do a very peaceful protest. So to have thousands of people on the streets in places like Syria, you know, peacefully demanding change, that's a, a, a majorly important thing, something we want to keep on supporting and keep on uh, encouraging. But the same thing in places like Egypt and, and, and Tunisia, to the longest standing dictators, Ben Ali and Mubarak, to be toppled in such a short period of time. Uh, so it's massively dramatic, but you know, the, the changes, the real human rights revolution that we at Amnesty, Amnesty International want to see and what we're calling for at this Global Day of Action are not going to come about in the next few days or weeks or months or years even. This is a generational struggle. Okay, Christian, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank you. It is us.